Hello everyone, I'm Rashmi Mangla, working as an assistant professor for the BPA department of St. Andrews Institute of Technology and Management. The subject that I take up here is organizational behavior. This is our second lecture of OB and the topic that we'll be covering today are historical development of organizational behavior wherein we'll be seeing various theories and today we'll be covering the classical theory. All right. So let's begin. Now, you know, the field of organizational behavior, it has developed from various studies that has been conducted by behavioral scientists like industrial psychologists or, you know, sociologists and various other psychologists as well. So here we have some theories that have been generated through various studies of organizational behavior. So these th we have three main theories, classical theory, neoclassical theory and modern theory. Now, within classical theory, we have scientific management theory, administrative theory and bureaucratic theory. So, today we'll be only covering the classical theories. Let's begin with that. Now, the first theory that comes under classical theory is scientific management theory. Now, this was given by F.W. Taylor and in short, we call it the theory given by Taylor. And he emphasized on the scientific study of work in order to improve worker efficiency. He emphasized that the you know work should be scientifically studied if we want to improve the efficiency of the workers. So he has given us some principles. These principles are scientific task planning, standardization, training of worker, functional formmanship, and harmony not discord. Harmony not discord basically means that harmony is very important in the you know organization between the management and the workers. So these were the principles that were given by F.W. Taylor and within the first theory that is scientific management theory. Then we have the second theory, administrative theory. This is the most important theory. This theory was given by Henry Fiol and it focuses on principles which can be used by managers to coordinate the internal activities of the organization. So, you know, various principles that can be used so that the internal activities which go on in the organization, so that they can be coordinated. So, these principles were given under, within this theory and they were given by Henry Fiol. Now, you know, Henry Fiol classified business operations. Before starting the principles, we'll see the just classification of operations. He has classified all the operations that go on within the business into six major activities, all right? Now these activities are, first one is technical or which we call as production activity. First is production, second is commercial which involves buying and selling. Then we have financial that is use of funds, whatever funds we have we utilize them. Then security, protection of resources, accounting, we keep a track of the financial business of, way of all the accounts we are maintaining, we keep a track of all the transactions. Last one is managerial, that is planning and organizing business. You know, we have to plan that what has to be done further and we have to organize our business accordingly. So these are the six major activities which Fiol had described within the business operations. Now, as I told you, Fiol gave us various principles which could be used to coordinate the internal activities. So let's see the principles that were given by Henry Fiol. There were 14 principles that were given by Henry Fiol. We'll see them one by one. First one is division of work. Now, you know, according to Henry Fiol, specialization promotes efficiency of the workforce. See, if we have a specialized workforce, it will promote efficiency. If work is, you know, divided, it will increase the productivity also. So, you know, the specialization of the workforce increases the accuracy, the speed and productivity of the organization so that is why division of work is necessary see whosoever is skilled for whatever work will give, will assign them that task only so work has to be divided according to the skills of the workers then only we can increase their efficiency also and the productivity also second is authority and responsibility now you know authority and responsibility they go together and they are two sides of the same coin once you got, get authority, responsibility comes along with it. Suppose, you know, you have got some authority that you have been authorized 
that you have to take care of or you know there is a program which is being conducted and you have been authority that you have to make the all the arrangements so along with authority what comes that it is your responsibility aapko kaam diya gaya you have it is your responsibility to do the work so there are two sides of the same coin jaisi authority milti hai responsibility comes along with it then discipline this management principle it is essential and is seen as the oil to make the engine of an organization run smoothly discipline is you know something which is very much needed if we want the work to be done within time if we want our you know workers to be efficient if we want to increase the productivity discipline is a key tool that is required so that is why we say that discipline works as an oil which can make the engine of the organization run very smoothly then we have unity of command now you know unity of command means that an individual employee should receive orders from one manager and that the employees answerable to that manager see you know we have a unity of command that if there is an employee he will have only one top head manager who will be responsible to give orders to him it's not that anybody is coming and giving them orders to do whatever work they want so that by this way the employees will get burdened so that is why they have only one manager and only that manager is responsible to allocate the work or to give orders to the employees and the empl- and that particular employee is answerable to that manager only the one who is giving the work to the empl- the employees then we have unity of direction now all employees deliver the same activity that can be linked to the same objectives they are delivering same kind of work which can be linked to same objectives now all activities must be carried out by one group that forms a team ek hi group puri activity carry out karega and these activities must be described in a plan of action they must be described then we have subordination of individual interest now in order to have an organization function well if we want our organization to function properly so you know fuel indicated that personal interest are subordinate to the interest of the organization you know basically it is our work ethics ki we have to first work for the organization and not for our individual interest our individual interest should be subordinate wo hum baad mein dekhte hain first we see the organizational interest first we work, first we are working for the organizational goals and for the interest of the organization then remuneration now remuneration you know it should be sufficient to keep the employees motivated and productive if remuneration is not sufficient employees will not be motivated now there are two types of remuneration namely monetary or non monetary now monetary includes compensation bonus or financial compensation basically and non monetary might be a complement or more responsibility or some kind of credits given they are non monetary remunerations then degree of centralization see the centralization implies concentration of decision making authority at the top management so our degree of centralization should basically be be the top management that is the executive board they must be the main authority who ha- who make the decisions then we have some more principles as i told you there were 14 next is scala chain now there should be a clear line in the area of authority like from top to bottom and all managers at all levels there should be a proper clear line we should know that who is the subordinate and who is the superior one so we should have a clear line about all the people from top to bottom and at all levels of the manager then order employees in an organization they must have the right resources at their disposal so that they can function properly in an organization that means they should have proper resources which they can utilize and they can function properly within the organization then stability of tenure of personnel see management strives to minimize employee turnover they do not man, in the, the organization will never want that their employees they know they leave the organization frequently frequently nay nay employees aate rahe they do not want they want stable staff you know why because when employees are there in the organization for a long time they become experienced they become efficient and no company wants to lose their efficient employees so management strives for a minimized employee turnover 
and to have the right staff in the right place ki sahi employees sahi post pe designated ho then initiative initiative now this encourages interest and involvement and creates added value for the company it creates a value for the company and employee initiatives are a source of strength for the organization whatever the initiatives employees take it it is a kind of strength for the organization last one is esprit de corps now this stands for striving for the involvement and unity of employees you know whenever we are talking about uni- unity in employees and whenever we strive for their involvement in unity that is when we talk about esprit de corps and managers are responsible for the development of morale in the workplace be it individually and in the area of communication also so esprit de corps it contributes to the development of culture and creates an atmosphere of mutual trust and understanding when people are united when people are involved with each other so an atmosphere of mutual trust gradually develops so these were the 14 principles that were given by henry fiol and that's it with our second theory that is administrative the- theory now we come to the third theory of you know which comes under classical theories that is bureaucratic theory now this theory is given by max weber and it can be defined as organizational structure with highly routine operating task it has a proper organized structure and it has highly routine operating task performed under formalized rules and regulations with task assigned to various departments so here the task is performed under proper rules and regulation and the task is assigned to different different departments like hierarchy is there division of work is there rules and regulation departmentalization record rationality and narrow span of control so the work is delegated in the departments so that was all about classical theories let's see some of the questions related to today's concept explain scientific management theory what are the key principles of fuel stay tuned for more upcoming lectures thank you